All right. So we're talking about hair. Talking really about important hair. stuff. Let's jump right in. I haven't even worried about it. It's so much less stress. I am so happy. I also think too, and I mean, by the way, I'm vain enough that I am not ready to go to this place yet, sure. but I really genuinely admire all of the women now, especially celebrities. You know, Pamela Anderson is not wearing makeup anymore. Mm-hmm. She's, this is who I am. The end. Jamie Lee Curtis is a good example. Or there are a lot of celebrities now that are like, this is what I look like. I'm I have, two, I have two for you. One is Andy McDowell, who I yeah. Oh, told, she looks so good. You look like her. I know. I've been told that's my doppelganger my whole you life. You do. Especially when I was younger. When I was younger and my face was a little more youthful and when I wear my hair naturally curly, I got that three times a week. I mean, I'll probably, anyway. And then the other thing I, wanted, I would definitely recommend for anybody listening to this is, and I'm sure you've seen this, Melissa, or... I would be surprised if you hadn't. Justine Baten, Bateman's yes. interview on Mayim Bialik's, how do you say her yes. last name? On her so good. podcast. And I don't listen to Mayim Bialik's podcast, but I had heard that, I had heard Justine Bateman referenced enough and I was like, all right, I'm just going to go dive in it. And I, and I actually watched the entire thing and it truly was the last thing that I watched and heard before I made the decision. I so it. when I went to my hairstylist the next time, I was like, I was in tears a little bit because we had already had the appointment scheduled and I was like, am I really going to do it? Am I really going to do it? And she was just like, are you okay? Are you good? And I was like, I know that I seem like a crazy person. I was like, but like through tears, I was like, I think I'm going to stop coloring my hair. And it was like, internally, I was afraid that she was going to think that I was dumb or or that I wasn't going to be a good client anymore. I mean, gosh, I have all kinds of hangups about that. And she was just like, it's totally fine. That's okay. I'll see you when you want to get it trimmed next time. And now I'm just thinking... Let's go all natural again and just see how long I can rock that. I love it. And also, you can go through phases, right? Like you Mm. could say, this works for me for right now. And maybe two years from now, you'll change your mind. And that's also fine. I think we sometimes feel like about some of these decisions, we have to draw a line in the sand and then we can never not do it again. No, you can start coloring your hair again if you really feel like it. But you also can lean into, this is who I am. I'm going to be authentic about a lot of things in my life. And I do think that as a lot of us get older, there are things about the aging process that are harder for women than they are for men. And I think accepting that and just being okay with it is really, I think that is next level life planning. Girl, I could not agree more. And maybe this is a perfect intro to everything that we're going to talk about today. But I also, you know, made that decision about my hair a couple months before I turned 40. Yeah, I had a big like internal I mean I was a little bit nervous about the closer it got the more I was nervous about it and I kind of went through it a little bit in terms of just thinking about life and about what I am and what I'm not and what I want to be and you're right that when you start to realize that you know you're making decisions proactively and not just reactively it's oh this actually feels good and I'm like I don't hate being 40 I was like wait a minute I got fucked really hard to get here and now right I can do brunette I can do blonde I can shave it off and put a wig if I wanted to but I would do that because I wanted to and not because somebody told me that I had to and that's very freeing so I get just the expectations of a lot of things like even just so this is since we're talking about hair like you and I both we are both in our 40s we both have really (laughs) long hair there used to be a proper edict that like once you turned a certain age you were automatically required to get like a mom haircut and (laughs) nothing wrong with a mom haircut. But I think it's all about it's a set of expectations that have been pretty traditional. And it includes like not talking about perimenopause and menopause and not talking (laughs) about things that happen to women that are real life things. And I think there are a lot of things that are happening that are really good about all of us being able to say this works for me or this doesn't work for me as we're having this conversation about really embracing. And I know that it's a life journey and because, you know, we both have children who are going out into the world who are going to have to figure these things out. But I see now a lot of women in their twenties now that are like, Oh, I have to get Botox. It kind of bums me out when I hear that because I'm just like, Oh, this expectation of what you have to look like as a woman starts so early and all, like all that stuff that's come out recently about 10 year olds going into Sephora and buying like really expensive makeup and skincare and stuff. But I, I don't know. This is, Clearly yeah, you have gotten me started down a rabbit hole. So yeah, I'm like, yeah, I would tell this girl, especially girls in their 20s, work on your personality. That yeah. will never leave you. Correct. And it will that's open fact. Uh, everywhere you go. Oh, man. Well, speaking of personalities, I love yours. 
<laughs> well, thanks. And I love yours right back. That's why we get along so well. That's we why really things do. work for us. So I texted you earlier to ask you if you knew your Myers-Briggs type. You did. What yes. did you say? Did you write a reply? Yeah. Okay. So here's my sitch with the Myers-Briggs. I took the full thing, like the real deal test many years ago as a work thing. Sure. Yeah. And, and so I'm actually interested in your thoughts on this because you know it much better than I do. But at that time, and for a long time, I was an ENTJ. Mm -hmm. And I know that obviously your personality is a lot more set. You know, you don't really change core aspects of your personality. But I will tell you, I would like to take the full thing again, because I wonder if I have changed quite radically. First of all, I'm definitely not an E. I'm for sure an I. I am very much Thank an introvert. Are. Oh, Thank I you. definitely am. Yeah. I do not recharge by being with people. I frequently say, hey, could I please go to a cabin in the woods by myself for a month? <laughs> like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm definitely an I. I think that has changed over time, but I think some of my other things have changed as well. So I need sense. to take it again. That makes sense. Yeah, we definitely have something that is complimentary. I was just curious because I have noticed recently that there's a lot of patterns around me in my life. Like ENFJs are all around me. I used to think that I was an ENFJ until my mom told me she was an ENFJ. And I was like, that's not accurate because we're not the same. Either time. you're wrong or I'm wrong. And she was like, sorry. And I was like, no, you be sorry. No, wait, I'm sorry. No, wait. Anyway, it was just like an opportunity to pick a fight that I didn't want to. But I actually came to realize that she was, I actually don't think she is an ENFJ, but I realized I was not an ENFJ. It's just that in an earlier stage of my life where I was much more people pleasing and much less aware of what my abilities were, it was very easy for me to be like, oh, yeah, that's, t you know, that's totally me. And I am extroverted, but I'm an introverted extrovert. So I can see how you're like, what did you say? You're an extrovert. I'm an extroverted introvert. introvert. Yes. Yes. So I will talk to anyone. I will talk to strangers on the street, but I don't want the stranger on the street to then go, would you like to go on a walk with me? No. Oh, yeah. No. I don't want a second conversation with you and then we're good. But I recharge by being alone and mm -hmm. I am very good at being alone. And I kind of always have been. See, I really like being alone and I prefer to be alone. It's just that I, it actually probably wasn't until um, COVID where I was like, oh, my God, I would talk to anybody that would yeah. come up to my door. I was okay, wait, I, maybe I am an extrovert and maybe I do need that a lot more than I thought. It, and this is something I say to people all the time now too, because you know, there's still a lot of people who haven't gone back into their offices. Yes. And so I'm like, oh, you know, are you working remotely going into the office? And they're like, yeah, 50%, whatever. And they're like, how about you? And I'm like, well, I've been working remotely for myself now for eight years. Yeah. It's like during the shutdowns when everybody had to work from home that was the first time that i was ever like oh my god but wait no it's like want to leave my house like i needed that ability to do that i wanted to retain the ability to do that because that was where i was like i'm you wanted the mind. option you yes. wanted the option to be able to do it yes yes so so that was very revealing actually <laughs> I am whereas, an extrovert. <laughs> whereas for me i have frequently referred to the dark days of covid as my ideal lifestyle couldn't go anywhere. People had to bring you food to your front door. You could not socialize. You couldn't go out to dinner. That was totally fine with me. So I can imagine like, introverted children decades from now, they'll be like, yes. tell us of what it was like in the utopia. Tell us of the, the rest of it. They're like, no, we're still panicking. Over of it. April 2020. Oh, God. <laughs> That's so, man. We're Okay, so we're, this is good because I think we're going to bring up a lot of, I think we're going to work through a lot of this. Okay, for some of us, it was traumatic. For Melissa, yes. it was like a vacation. Not really. Was. But we're, yeah. I mean, we're joking. I'm, I'm glossing over everyone. I'm, it was just, that is another part of my personality. Sometimes <laughs> I don't even know when I'm being sarcastic. So everybody <laughs> calm down. <laughs> well, I feel like I'm leading our conversation so far, even though you're, you're interviewing me, but I keep seeing like these perfect things and to bring up we're gonna we're gonna go straight into it ready well, melissa during during those dark days of 2020 yeah. and we're talking literally april may june yeah of course after that but it was during those dark days of 2020 that melissa and i got really close yes. so this is pertinent to the conversation today because there was a period of time and you know melissa's been a part of the podcast for a really long time. And this was uh, a little bit prior to me starting to reach out and say, okay, my, like, it'd be good to maybe have some co-hosts on. And Melissa had volunteered for that. 
But the thing is that I had gone into this period of overdrive, over responding for everybody that I knew. And that was a lot to do with because everybody's at home and they couldn't go out. For example, for the organizers, they couldn't go in home. I had just completed my coaching degree with the University of Texas and everybody who had been in my class, they were like, wait, Jen already has an online business. Like they were becoming certified in coaching so that they could then go on and have a business. And I do things backwards. So I had already done that first and then I got my certification. And then there were other like random people in my life. We're going to circle back to this later. People like my father, who they're professional speakers, musicians. That's what he does. But a lot of his friends, too, were similar, where they run events or they speak in public. And it required people in public in an event space to, to be able to do that. So I had this huge group of people in my life who all of a sudden definitely needed or were looking for support in not necessarily building an entirely new business, but how to at least even temporarily take their work online and do like my dad was doing like Facebook lives with his stories and songs and guitar. And so I was like helping him with that. And then some of the organizers were starting to do virtual organizing sessions. And then some of my other coaching friends wanted to know much more about like how I was building out like a course and a Facebook group and a podcast. And it was like, whoa, like so overwhelming. So my personality, my response was to talk. <laughs> there goes that extrovert. And everybody knows that about me. Like I, when asked, will talk your ear off about something that I'm excited about. And if I'm not excited or if I'm not asked, I look like an introvert. So right. that's interesting. So that was a period of time where I went into full speed, 100 miles an hour. Like I got on Facebook live every single day for well over a month straight until my voice, I actually lost my voice. And while recovering from that, I was like, whoa, I'm tired. And I had yeah. to stop. But I got on Facebook Live every single day. So this wasn't for Pro Organizer Studio. It wasn't for anything specific. It was just like, okay, I'm going to get on here and answer questions because I knew that these people in my life had the concept that you could make money online. But I was like, hey, you do know somebody who's doing this and I do have a different point of view. And I saw a whole bunch of other coaches, online business gurus who were suddenly trying to sell you their course. And I was like, uh -uh. no, I'm like you don't need to buy a course just to understand the basics. I'm just going to teach the basics for free. And I did that. I had nothing to sell for it. I didn't want to. I really actually had no idea what I was doing other than just to keep that momentum going and answer questions. Probably around the time that I burned out, because I do recall some really specific conversations with Melissa. When I say burned out, I mean, I, like I said, lost my voice. I didn't lose you literally my voice burned yet. your voice out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, Brie, who was working for me at the time, she was just like, mm, Jen, I'm a little worried about like your, your mm, are you going to be able to sustain this? And I was just like, I got this. Don't worry about it. Thank you yeah. for your, thank you. Well, Thank you Melissa, for yeah, no, and she was awesome because she she knew better. She was like, I can see this is not going to end well, <laughs> but bless her heart. Melissa was one of the people, and I'm not saying that there was not more than one, but there was very few. There were not that many people who knew. She, and we were close. I mean, we had met each other in person at the Las Vegas retreat um, for Pro Organizer Studio, which took place in October of 2019. 2019. Yeah. Yep. So we had just met six months before that, you know, stayed in touch a little bit, but she was somebody who reached out to me on a personal level and was like, she didn't say the words, but it was her in her energy. I know you're not okay. And it's okay that you're not okay. And that being willing to see through what I was showing to everybody and, and to not try to, I mean, you were not coming at me with like happy positive. You were just like, this sucks. And I know that this sucks. And I can see like how, you know, challenging this. Is. I mean, you were saying all those things that I was just like, thank you. I felt like I could just sort of have that sigh of relief. And so that beginning of our friendship being in those dark days, which were definitely some of my worst times that I've ever had. And I, yeah. again, it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. I love that was the ideal lifestyle for you. I mean, <laughs> A week ago, I mean, I, it wasn't, there were a I lot know, of bad times, I know. right? Like, but, but you had it in you to reach out and to build our friendship. And that ends up in this story becoming so much more than just being there for me when stuff was challenging and difficult, but something that clearly has become 
a long-term change and benefit to both of us and to the entire company for Organizer Studios. So, all right. So that's how I wanted to set this up, which is that you have literally been a force of good, not just in my life, but for everyone here who's listening. It is not an understatement to say that if Melissa had not come along at the time that she did and in the way that she did and us beginning to work together in the way that we did, that I am pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that although certain aspects of the business may have still existed today, it would not at all be standing. It would be like a house that I built and then moved out of and yeah. just left it or or, it, or I would have had to just really downsize. This is good because I'm going to use this house metaphor. I built the house, Pro Organizer Studio. I could not continue at the level that I had been. And so it was either, okay, we're going to downsize and Pro Organizer Studio is going to be a smaller house or somebody like Melissa comes along, not only wants to be involved, but wants to build a second level on it. Yes. People, this is not something that you come across every day. Like this kind of partnership and this kind of relationship and her ability to see that was what I needed and to take it seriously and then to go all in on it is like an actual miracle. And I don't, yeah, Melissa, I will sing your praises. This is not to get everybody to be like, oh my gosh, we didn't know. But like that, it really truly was, you know, that's, you end up, you end up changing my life, but you end up changing this industry and doing what people needed and that I knew that I could not do. And the most responsible thing was to allow Melissa to help me. And, but Melissa built that relationship with me by saying, girl, I know like, you were like, hey, just go watch Shit's Creek. You're like, yeah. this is what you need right now. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go do that. And I did. And it was like, yeah. I let myself chill out and relax and just laugh at a time that I was like, I can't even feel emotions. It was amazing. Thank you. Because I think it, well, first of all, that was very kind. And I'm not sure that I deserve all that, but I yes, do appreciate it. Yes, you do. Very much. Also, watching Shit's Creek or watching TV in general is always going to be my go-to suggestion for you when anyone's having a hard time. So if you would like a TV suggestion, I have millions of them for you, no matter what kind of mood you're in. But I would also like to say, I think that people come along in your life for at different times for different reasons. And I think that it was mutual in terms of how we saved each other because mm -hmm. I also needed something to because you and I, you said something you're like you told me to go watch Shit's Creek and chill out and I'm like you and I are not generally described as chill out people neither <laughs> would be described as chill out people I had um, never considered watching TV before yeah, right. it was really wild I mean I was like had prided myself on I'm not one of those TV people and I was like wait a minute I really like this but I am like a go-to. We're both very go-to. We want to go do things and we want to go achieve things and whatever. And I think that learning along the way that you don't have to be that person all the time. But then also for me, I needed an outlet for some of my, let's just call it my old corporate skills. They weren't mm -hmm. old, but the pace that or the, I needed something exciting and a project, but I also, and we can get into this because I think this is an important part of our partnership, is mm -hmm. we're good at different things. We have a Venn diagram of things that we're both good at. And then we have th things that are on different sides that we're both good at very individually. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that has always been about me is I don't want to come up with the idea. Mm -hmm. I just want to take the existing house. I don't want to drop the plans for the house. I don't want to find the lot for the house. <laughs> I don't want to do any of that, but I'll build that second level for you. And then yes. I'll go, you know what? Let's also throw in an attic playroom. And let's <laughs> also, like, that's so good. what I am good at. I yeah. like the foundation laid for me and then I can build onto it. And so, and you are a consummate entrepreneur in my mind that you get a lot of really great ideas and you get energized by those new ideas. Whereas mm -hmm. I would like to take something existing and make it even more beautiful and take it even further than it was. So I think that we were good for each other at the exact, exact right period of time. You're, you could not be more correct. And with anybody that's thinking about a change in their business or their life or whatever, it's about, you know, maybe there is that magical person out there.
Yeah. <laughs> or maybe you just need to start thinking differently because I think, is it fair to say that until that time you would not have thought necessarily about, oh, there are maybe other options for what I want to do? Well, I, okay. So I will say it wasn't off the radar at all, but I just knew, here's the thing. Here's the way I look at it. The house that was built by me was built with these certain flaws and this is true for every business and it's true for every single brand. We talk a lot about branding or I made a big portion of my content about branding during my tenure as the main host of this podcast. And branding is always personal because it, it has to be something that reflects you. And when I look back at the things that were such a core piece of Pro Organizer Studio and Inspired Organizer and everything else that we did, it it's not a judgment of right or wrong. But when I look back, time passes and then you're like, oh, I wouldn't do that today because this and this. But it's like your mindset and who you are at that time becomes a part of the business that you build. And then eventually, here, here's the next part of this metaphor. So it's, okay, you know, you build a tent and then you're like, okay, now I have a roof. Now I have an actual house. Oh, there's people coming. It's, I can have a party. And there's people that come along to that party who think it's the best thing they've ever seen. Of course, there's some people who pass on by and don't care, but that's how a business sort of starts to grow. And of course, when you have employees or you have a team, those become your co-hosts of the party and some of them come and go. At the end of the day, though, when you've got a crack in a foundation or there's a leak somewhere, first of all, your co-hosts of the party, this is in their house, like they're freaking scatter, right? And your people that are there to attend the party, which is your customers and your clients, who is laying awake at night? Who is laying down their ego, laying down their money, their time, their blood, sweat, tears, their life in order to do what you said you were going to do? And again, this is true for every business. I'm not just talking about myself. And so I saw it as my responsibility to, one, fix as many of those cracks as possible, yeah. And to not let down the people that were already a part of it. But when, if I cannot, if I reach a point where I cannot be the host of that party anymore, it is my responsibility to do something about it. And in leadership, I was reading a book at the time. Mike Michalowicz is a longtime favorite of mine. So uh, good. So, so good. The book that he had just come out with, and this was during quarantine that I read it. So I'm not sure exactly when it was published. It had to have been like right before that. The book he had come out with at that time in 2020 is called Fix This Next. I ended up getting the Fix This Next certification because I just loved his whole book and concept so much. But one of the pillars of what he talks about, and he uses Maslow's pyramid of hierarchy of needs, but he makes it like a hierarchy of business needs. So he kind of uses yeah. that analogy. And near the top of it is planning for turnover of leadership. Yeah. It's not a, oops, we didn't know we were going to have to turn over leadership. It's planning for the eventual growth of the biggest leaders in your company. And, you know, everybody has to have an exit plan, even the CEO or the founder at some point. And so the truth of the matter is it comes down to, yeah, like you could get into this like totally automated passive business where you are just the owner and you do absolutely nothing. In an online business, in theory, if you wanted to, you could completely just be like having all of your stuff running on automated and have a team to handle customer service and that they literally just never call you. Like, oh, Jen is off in, you know, Europe and she has no clue what's going on, but she's just like collecting checks. And I get that in, in theory, that's a concept that some people would talk about, but I absolutely could not do that. I built the company with the purpose of being a real person who is there dedicated to real people. And so therefore, if my real person needs to go into, uh, I don't want to be over dramatic. It's not like I, I literally had to hide away from the world, but if I cannot do my job, it is my responsibility to find somebody who can do my job. That's yes. it's just, it doesn't matter who you are. That is just true. So Melissa, you know, coming along and me just having read that book about planning for the eventual turnover of leadership. Melissa became not just somebody who was going to help me host the podcast, but somebody who could, for example, create the Organizing Essentials course. Yeah. Guess how many years people have been asking for that, guys? Like a million. And I knew that I was not the right person to do it. It was a big sort of potential project of, I don't, you know, I just kind of didn't know. And so when Melissa came along and I saw that she had all of these skills and abilities, yes, from her corporate career, but she also 
key point within a period of time where she was ramping up her energy and ability to give and serve people, I was like, yes, it's like seeing a stop that's rising. It's like, yep, that's the one. Because I was entering a period where I was like, I'm literally not going to be able to even get on a video or a podcast, which is why most of y'all have not seen me on anything in four years. We're doing good now. We're happy. But of course, I get on here and I talk to Melissa absolutely anytime she wants to. But leadership is not a joke. That's the bottom line to me is that I never felt like it was a joke. I sacrificed. And what I had to put in to even get it to the point that it was a one story house, this was my time with my children when they were younger, my adult relationships, my relationships with my family. When you were a leader of a company and you have put yourself out there and said, I'm on the hook for this, it comes above everything else. So I had to find somebody who, and then Melissa said, she was like, and I remember you saying this to me at the time. You were like, Jen, I would never do what you did in a million years. And she was like, and I would never try to start, even try to compete with you because it looks <laughs> so also hard. true. And it's I was like, so hard. Yeah, I was like, by the way, it is freaking hard. But Melissa, and I don't know, have you talked about, have you shared on this podcast about being a surrogate? I have not, actually. Oh, no, when people well, ask me, yeah, when people ask me like why my business is named what it is, I'll explain to them, but I've never actually talked about it on the podcast. Oh my, so, well, yeah. I don't want to like out that story, but- I don't care, it's it not, not it's, lost it's out. Okay, so it's not lost on me that Melissa, this was years ago, obviously before <laughs> before I came into her life, but- I was like, damn, you know, it takes a special kind of person to be a surrogate mother. And so when Melissa just talked a few minutes ago, she was like, well, I'm not a starter, but I can take over something that's already started. I was like, yeah, like a whole baby growing. Like you're like, that is such a special gift that you would even do that. But that was what my business needed. And I didn't put yeah. all of that together at the time. But I was like, I don't just need Melissa to come in here and, you know, half, half host a podcast. I need right. her to want to continue to nurture it in the way that it deserves and to take it seriously and to take on what I put out there as my mission of serving professional organizers. And guess what, y'all? Yeah, that's what you've been seeing. That is what you've been seeing since the middle of 2020. And, you know, of course, that was a long transition process. But this baby ain't mine anymore. It's Melissa's. It's seeing your child. You're always going to be the baby's mom. Always the baby's mom, always the baby's mom. And there's a little bit of, so, okay, let me take a pause and then you ask a question before I keep telling you how I feel about this. <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> well, I, I think, I mean, you have said so, so, so many things there that, I mean, I, this might be a seven hour uh, podcast, so everyone buckle up. I've been um, waiting for four years to talk about it, so it's already Yeah, good. right. So, but it's so funny. I've never thought about that, the surrogate baby. Like, I've never connected those two stories until now. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that is kind of it what makes, happened. Like, it makes sense. It, yeah, it totally does. So, <laughs> yes. And by the way, I'll tell anyone the story. If you ever want another story, just email me. I'll ha happily tell you the story about my belly buddy. But I have a new belly buddy, which is Pro Organizer Studio. But I think <laughs> that something that we don't acknowledge as much is, you know, organizers tend to run, even if you have a, a very large team, they are what are termed small businesses, right? Just because they are small businesses, just because we are not running Apple or Google, whatever. Yeah. It does not make the challenges of running those businesses inconsequential or insignificant. The Absolutely. challenges of running a small business in a lot of cases are a lot more significant and a lot harder than running a great big business. And I know this because I was in multi-billion dollar businesses and mm -hmm. I have been in a business that made $11,000, right? Like, <laughs> I, I mean, what you're saying about leadership is really important because what mm -hmm. I want to teach organizers is you are a CEO. I don't mm -hmm. care if you're a CEO of one person, mm -hmm. one person business you are still a leader and you have to think about big leader things. But just as great big companies have very intense succession plans, small businesses have to have those too. And you recognize that and you saw signs in yourself that said, I am not going to be able to be a steward of this forever. I have 100%. to find someone. And the word stewardship, I think, is really important because... Yes. When you are a steward, you are a steward of resources, you're a steward of people, you're a steward of all those things. And I think one of the biggest things is you and I actually care 
very much about the people that we serve. This is not lip service. It is not a sales tactic to be like, oh, I care about you. No, I really do. I lose sleep thinking about the people that are in Inspired Organizer and what can I do to help them and how do I grow their businesses? And so I think that you recognizing I maybe am at the end of my ability to serve and steward this group, I need to find someone who's energized and ready for it. And I happened to be that person at that time. And I continue to be that person because I love our people. I genuinely do. I love our people too. And this is my love letter to them is I got you, Melissa. (laughs) You know, every once in a while people are like, Hey, you doing okay? And of course, like I'm always, I'm, I'm around. I'm not, I'm not there, but obviously Melissa's jumping in and being the face. But every once in a while, like, you know, we miss hearing from you. I mean, of course, and here's the thing. I miss being heard from a little bit, but at the same time, there's the energy and the change that comes with time. And knowing that I can't say the same stuff that I've been saying when I have changed as a person and we're not talking about evolved as in getting better because that's not really what it is. But I have uh, realized a lot more things about myself and it just takes a certain maturity to not just get up there and phone it in. I'm physically incapable of doing that. Like I remember, I think I said at the beginning of this, when I feel when I feel like I have something to say, I can't stop talking when I am called on to speak about something and my emotions and my thoughts are just all over the place. This person that is here is not there in those times. It sort of feels like being frozen, but for people who get online and create a lot of content and who are leaders and do all these things, you've got to really be committed, not just to your message, but to the fact that your message will evolve over time because of you and who you are and the things that you learn. And it's like, you have to have the confidence to get up in front of people in the first place, but you also have to check your ego at the door because you're going to get roasted alive by comments or by yourself, like just tearing yourself apart because you're just like getting up there and saying the same crap you said 10 years ago. Come on, you know, things do change and you do need to be committed to your perspective shifting over time. But also here's the thing. I know that what I built here was the exact right thing for me at that time and the exact right thing for a lot of people who jumped on board with the way the way that I was teaching, the way that I was doing things, and I'm grateful for that. And now women jumping on board today that might need to hear those same things that I said eight years ago. And the good thing is that they're recorded and you can go back and watch it. And those were the exact right things that I needed to say and that people needed to hear at that time. But I can't in good conscience still get up and get on my soapbox. You know, I like to preach a little bit. It's no, the things that I would say today are a little different, but the heart and soul is absolutely still there. I mean, if if you've been around for a while, it's like you do see things change over time and you can tell there's a big difference between Jen's stamp of how she does things and Melissa's stamp of how she does things. And I love yep. that. I just, I just recently, so I didn't even realize that Melissa had rebranded the Pro Organizer Studio website. Yes, y'all. That's how uninvolved I am. Um, because this is hers. This is her business. But recently I told her, I, I was like, Hey, I need to log into our YouTube channel. Cause I was trying to locate a, a, like a really old video. And, and it was such a weird feeling. Cause I was like, it feels like she gave me the keys to a house that I used to live in. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it is the house you used to live in, but also like you went back to high school and you've got in your old locker. Weird. Yes. That was what it kind of <laughs> felt like. Cause I was like, I was like, like, wait, I sort of recognize things, but was that where I had government class or was yeah. that where I had math? Yeah, no, that was really funny. And so I logged into Pro Organizer Studio and then it like accidentally took me to Melissa's email and the yeah. way that she manages her email is so different because, you know, she's got yes. like a million things going on all at once. And I was like, I was like, get me out of here. <laughs> and, I can't be here was, anymore. I know, but it, it was so great. And then I went on the website and I was like, this is Melissa's Pro Organizer Studio. This is clearly this is not Jen anymore. And that was why I was like, hey, we should just go ahead and have this episode because the commitment that is at the heart, it has not changed. Melissa's style is slightly different. And I love how you're always going to have this blend of here's where we started. Here's how it's going. And Melissa is that person who is to your point about not starting something, but being willing to grow it and build on it and answer what people are going to continue to need. 
That is such a long-term commitment that my little 32-year-old brain at the time, if you had told me, oh, you can't start this thing unless you're willing to see it all the way to the end. And if you had told me what all the way to the end would be, I would have been like, yeah, absolutely not. I mean, that's the thing is that you have to have somebody like me who just sort of has blinders on of just, I don't know what's going to happen a year from now, but right. we're going to deal with it and we're going to grow with it. And blessed. I am very blessed with relationships with people like Melissa who were like, I got you. It's not like I was wrong, but I wasn't the right person for forever. Right. And Melissa's forever can also, of course, change. Yeah. But um, I don't know what my forever looks like. Right. Do, right. Literally <laughs> I don't none like of us do. Lock you in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be right. like 95 yeah. still talking about organizing. But <laughs> what can I do? think this is really important because what the business was for the first five years is going to look very different than what five years from now looks like. The difference between 2020 and 2024 <laughs> Why we couldn't have envisioned some of the differences that we would have, like you do not have a crystal ball. You have to know your own strengths and weaknesses and where you're good at pivoting and where you're not and where your flexibility is. There are a million things that go into it. And it does not mean that there's only one person who can ever do something. I definitely do certain things differently than you. It doesn't mm -hmm. make you right and me wrong or me right and you wrong. They're just mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. The end. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that organizers can relate to if they decide that they're going to build a team and they start to have a lead organizer that goes out and does sales calls for them. And that's a control, letting control go. And I'm sure for you, it was hard to let some of that, you know, you were giving your baby away. Okay. Let's talk about that for a second. Cause yeah. it, in case anybody out there has ever considered selling their organizing business or what it would look like to release control over to even a lead organizer. Say you're on maternity leave or say you just need to not be physically yeah. out there for a while because it's a highly physical job. It's a hard job. Organizer. Yeah. Very hard. So it makes sense that over time, there's going to be times where you have less energy and times where like you just physically, you get to a point where you're just like, I can't do the stuff that I used to do anymore. Yeah. So in case you have ever thought about selling a business, here's what that feels like. <laughs> First of all, when it's the right person, it's like probably getting married to the right person. You're like, this was the best day of my life. This was a godsend. This is a win-win for everybody. But it also feels, yeah, hey, there goes my child that I have given up. And there's a little bit of, I will tell you, you know, moments where you're just like, it's like seeing your kid and you're like, oh, that's, oh, but her hair's not brushed like how I would have brushed it. And, you know, it's just little right. things where you're just like, I'm just not going to look, you know, it's, I know it's all good. Yeah, that's why she stopped looking, you guys, because she couldn't see it. <laughs> I could see it, but I was also like, hey, the other thing that was really important, too, was that long before Melissa and I made this transition, I had already backed off of, I had already grown through some of my challenges, which in the early days were that I was absolutely tethered to my phone at all times of the day, answering questions on social media, talking on Facebook private messaging people. People think of it as like being um, chained or chained down, but I was like, no, I'm serving. I'm doing what I'm supposed to I'm doing and being the person that I needed to be. And to a large extent, when you're getting a business off the ground, you have to. But that issue alone caused more damage that I inflicted or that I did not see was so harmful to my children and my husband at the time than I could have even been aware of. And I had worked through that issue like already way before Melissa came on. So there was already way less of the expectation that Jen personally was going to respond to every single thing. I mean, I used to respond to every single email that I got from anybody in the early days. I mean, it was all hours of the day, personal yeah. replies. I built the business on personal replies. So there was a time that I had already gone through where I had already backed off of that. So by the time Melissa came on, it was not like we, I had to say, hey, you're not going to hear so much from me. People were already not expecting. I had the mentors in Inspired Organizer and I had Brie and we had the podcast and I wasn't managing our social media personally. So that was already sort of off my mental plate. And so when Melissa came on, it's not like it had to be this big transition. She just became another face and voice in the whole entire business. And it wasn't so much of a 
you know, challenge of having to hand over the keys one day and feeling like I got kicked out. That was not it right. at all. There was a long transition period of just bringing Melissa on and familiarizing and having everybody familiarize themselves with her as a face and voice of the business that was equal to my own and or better, especially once she launched the Organizing Essentials course and she got her Master KonMari certification. I was like, see, this is the organizer. I hesitate to say this because I don't really want to compare myself, but I'm like, this is the type of person that should be running this business because she can do all of these things. And it does help that Melissa is a little older than me and her kids are yep. a little older than mine. So she was already at a little bit different phase of life, which was very helpful. Which um, makes a big difference, too. I mean, let's not gloss that over. My kids were at a, a very difference. different point of life. But I do also want to say something that I want you to leave this in and not edit it out. Okay. The other big difference is that you have Tim. Tim, as in Melissa's husband, who I think is one of the most fantastic people that I have ever met in my life. He's pretty great. The partner that is the partner to the person who was running the company uh, that you look up to makes a huge difference. It's, it's not to say that the partnership that I was in did not help build this business because it absolutely did, but it was not conducive to continuing to run it at the way that I had because essentially I was at the end of what I could do. And so, you know, a part of me, I mean, again, not secretive, like y'all can stalk me, but a big part of me stepping back from the business was also me taking care of my personal life. And yes, I did get divorced, you know, through and over COVID. I mean, it began during COVID and has been complete for a while now. And when we talk about the challenges that I had as a leader, I still went and tried to smooth over, going back to our house analogy, smooth over as many of those, I'm not going to say cracks, but just flaws, like flaws in the foundation that it was like, oh, oh if I, you know, if I was Melissa and I had a Tim, I would have never set it up that way, right? Yeah. There was a certain point where it was not so much that I didn't want to watch what Melissa was doing. Of course, I'm always supportive, but it was partially too like looking back at a house that you grew up in that some really sad things happened in. Yeah. It's not just a business. That was my life. That was my entire life for so many years. And so for Melissa to come in and not just love it, but make it better is worth like all of the little moments where I was, you know, you know, you see our personalities are different. Look at our background. Look, this is, you know, this is Jen and that's Melissa. And the website, yeah, there's a lot like going Melissa. on back here. <laughs> website looks like Melissa and the podcast sounds like Melissa. And it's supposed to because she's the person who has the ability to do all of these things. And I have a much more limited range, like yeah. Black and white. Melissa's got a lot of color. So again, it's not right or wrong. It's just kind of an understanding of the business and life are not two separate things. Your relationships contribute to it a lot. I know that there are many other organizers that either one were trying to build their business as single mothers, like I did early on. There's just, there's so many challenges that come with that. There's, and I know what those are because I had been through that part. But when you're in a leadership role and you're like fully embracing that leadership role, I believe that. Everybody, I truly do believe this. I don't think I used to. I think I used to think it's not that big of a deal because I was coping. <laughs> like, it's not that big of a deal if your partner's not involved in your business. Hey, this is my thing. It doesn't have to be his thing. And we don't have to see eye to eye. Well, it really does matter. If you're going to be the best leader that you can be, then your other half needs to be actively supporting it. Not just tolerating it and not just being there and not just checking on it and not just, you know, it's just, but like actively really in it. Not like I'm saying that Tim is in the business, but he is in like y'all's relationship and how he is and the way that you guys work together is one of my top five couples of all time that I look up to. That's I love very kind. I love you, Tim. I know it's awkward that I keep saying that, but everyone <laughs> did. He appreciates it. He absolutely loves you in return and he really appreciates it. And if he did not have COVID right now, he would be down here to say hello. <laughs> Stop. He has COVID? He really does. He I'm is gonna send him really sick. Hours. <laughs> he is I'm really sorry sick to hear that. I am counting the minutes until I get it. Um, But no, what you've said is really important because I do think there are a lot of things that building a business, and by the way, many different kinds of, of businesses. The work that I have done since I joined Pro Organizer Studio, you know, I have Pro Organizer Studio. I also still have my organizing business, although that now I term it as my side hustle because Pro Organizer <laughs> Studio is my job. It's a um, lot. Yes. It's yeah. a lot. But it every single one of these things, 
the line that I say all the time is my answer to any question that I ever get inside organizing is it depends because it does. <laughs> and <laughs> your business depends on your support structure. Mm -hmm. And when I look at, you know, there are women that like Megan, I interviewed a few months ago. She has four kids. She is a single mom running a business. I don't, I bow down to her, right? Yeah. Because I have a structure in place that allows me to be able to say, I need to work till 11 o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. And he goes, cool. See, exactly. You can, I'll do go that. watch TV. I don't yeah. care. He'll bring me dinner uh, at my desk. And so I am very fortunate in wow. that. And I do not yeah. um, take that for granted at all. Yeah. And also my kids are older. Yeah. My kids have always been pretty self-sufficient. So I have some things in place that allowed me to do it. But that's, again, another a little bit of that serendipity of I happen to be right. the right person for you. You were the right person right. for me. It, it has been a really good partnership for that reason. Yeah. Bless Tim for bringing you food. See, I just can't quit complimenting him. He's I think me. he's he's gonna get like a giant head when he lives. I'll bring him Austin. in order to he when deserves he wakes up. to have a giant head. He should have a giant when he wakes up. I will bring this to him and be like, listen, do you want to feel a little better? Jen said nice things about you, and it's gonna go on the internet. I know. <laughs> so and it's funny because you and I don't have the same personality, so I'm not looking for somebody exactly like Tim either. It's just that his yeah. energy, like with you and the way that he shows up and supports you. And I've only yeah. been in person at your house once a few years ago. And I was just like, whoa, is this what it's like for you? It's just, he's just so, he's just a joy. Like he's so yeah. fun. Yeah. I just feel like, I was like, yeah, like he can deal with, he can deal with my crazy and Melissa's crazy all of yeah. the day. I was like, this is really cool. This is great. Anyway. Oh yeah. No, I have had, <laughs> I, I had workers in my prior life who's like, Wow, I feel really sorry for your husband, like having to deal with you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no, well, you went with great. Like, <laughs> it actually hurt my feelings, but I was gonna say that was not a very nice thing for anybody. To but I can also be a little much. Like I, I always say, I'm not everyone's cup of tea, and that's mm -hmm. fine. But Tim is able to deal with with my level of intensity about things and mm -hmm. he deals with it very gracefully. The other thing that works for us is we get ratcheted up by different things. Mm -hmm. So like in parenting, I mean, this is, uh, you know, we're kind of going off the subject, but yeah, parenting or in life, like he'll go level 11 on something that I'm super chill about. I'm like, nope, we'll figure it out. And right. then I'll go level 11 on something. And he's like, why are we getting worked up about this? This is no big deal. What? And so our, we're off at different times, which I think is actually good. <laughs> so No, I think that's beautiful. You almost be like perfectly complimentary like, yeah. personalities. Yes. But I want to go back to something you said because, and this is kind of funny, but well, it's funny to me. I can laugh about it. But <laughs> one of the things that in this conversation is of having people think about whether it is their future plans or building a team, anything. Like, this conversation can take you a lot of different directions. But one of the things that we can be upfront about is it isn't always easy. So it wasn't always easy for you to be like, yep, here's my thing. And oh, you're doing it really differently than I am. And all that. But it also, on the flip side, and this goes for organizers too, if you are used to being the only person that goes out and then all of a sudden you have a lead organizer come in and it's not you showing up at things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like sometimes you have people react to that. And there are definitely people, you and I are different about how we do a lot of things. I have, I really, it was important to me to keep the the spirit of the programs and the spirit of the company but I will do things differently because I am a different person mm -hmm. and so there are some people that are like well but I miss Jen they but, do and they say that yeah especially at the beginning they're like I don't know you like you just came out of the blue I don't know you one person was very blunt about it <laughs> but but he didn't tell me about that but like there, there is a changeover. And so some of those growing pains are also things that you need to be realistic about. There are people who were like, well, wait, I'm used to Jen. I'm used to hearing from Jen. I'm used to getting emails from Jen. I'm used to Jen doing the podcast. And eventually those people, most people have gotten used to me. And then someday if I decide that I want to do something different, they'll get used to someone else. It's, we get a new president every four years, right? Like people are very upset about that. But the old president doesn't come back to the White House and say, hey, guys, I'm going to stick around a little bit, right? Right. right. But uh, it's just important to know that if you're going to go through a business transition, mm -hmm. there are a lot of things you have to be prepared for, for whether very you are true. the person that is saying I'm stepping back or the person that is taking over. So being open with your team about those things, I think is really important. Very true. 
just understanding. It's good for people to realize. This goes back to what you said earlier about even if you're a one-person company, you are a CEO. And to just recognize that the way companies work, big companies, the way companies work is people end contracts, people move on, people get new jobs, and somebody else fills the job. Even CEOs step down. Yeah, I mean, this is normal in business, the corporate world. And therefore, even when something starts with literally just me and my face, like on Facebook yeah. Live, hey guys, it's me, it's 9 p.m. on Tuesday. Even when something starts like that, it will grow to the point where it's, okay, I know it looks like it's just me and it's not. There's all these people behind the scenes that contribute to this. And so it's just helpful to recognize because, you know, I'm sure Melissa actually had a really great answer and told people like, hey, Jen's not disappeared. It's just I'm part of the front facing team now. Of course, people don't watch every single piece of content. So it's, you you know, yeah, you're probably tuning into your favorite show and you're like, wait a minute. This wait a minute. Host, this guest host never leaves. Like, where's my person? There's a different Phoebe on Friends. What's going exactly. on? Like, what happened to Phoebe? Right, <laughs> right. And yeah, people do have to adjust. And but when you do recognize that and when you say to yourself, hey, like this the way come, you know, it gives you the permission to change, too, because you're going to want that one day. You're going to need to have the ability to grow and to either have somebody else step up with you or yeah. step up on your behalf or possibly even replace you long term. I never said to Melissa that I was like ghosting her and y'all and saying see and see and never. I'm like, I will always be here. <laughs> yes. Let's be like, hey, Melissa, I feel like I haven't been talking enough about something lately. Do you think we just do a podcast because it makes me feel like loved and useful and she's just tell me the answer is doing. always yes. Yeah. And then by the time yeah, and so <laughs> right. And so it's kind of nice because I love I still love talking about the big picture of what professional organizing is about. I did reach a point for a little while. Ooh, this is a really good segue. Are you ready? I'm ready. Did reach a point for a little while where I was like, I want to do something that has nothing to do with organizing. I don't want to talk about organizing products. I don't want to hear the word container store. I do not want to, I just didn't want to talk about decluttering. I get it. Declutter. I was like, I, I just, I, so there was a period of time. So I, just to give you more personal details, guys, yeah. I moved and moved myself and my children. There's a larger story behind the scenes on why all this happened. But in, in 2020, my, my children's father and their stepmother relocated. Their stepmother's from Maine. And if y'all know my story or whatever, but my kids dad and I had always been like right down the street from each other for the majority of their lives. And so the biggest change going into 2020, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be so hard because my kid's dad is moving and I was going to be the school year parent and they were going to start spending summers up there and holidays up there. And I was like going into therapy because I thought the biggest problem I was going to have in 2020 was helping my kids adjust to yeah. that change. <laughs> Guess Wrong. what? That problem didn't even make the top 10 of 2020. At the end of the <laughs> day, I was like, the top 25. <laughs> holy moly. Like, it was so wild how life was just like, nope, now let me readjust you <laughs> all the way down here and then make it seem like that was easy. Still not easy. But what ended up happening was a couple years into this, I was, I said, okay, self, like, what do you need? And I relentlessly had to be honest with myself about, now that I was the full-time parent, just to be honest with you guys, I wouldn't have been able to build Pro Organizer Studio in the first place if my kids had not been 50-50 with their dad. Yeah. So there were nights and weekends that I could stay up all night, get up early in the morning and only focus. Like I'm such a single focused person. The only reason why I could even do it to begin with was because we had the 50-50. So this was actually not only about having the right partner, but having the right co-parent who yeah. was taking up that part, multiple layers of things going on there. So, so in the summer of 2020, and this was another big reason why me stepping back from the business was absolutely critical was because my children went to Maine for the whole summer, the first time in 2020 that had been planned for about a year prior. So it wasn't like that wasn't a surprise. It's just that there was so much else going on at that time when it finally happened that I was just like, Oh my, I, what? And it was a lot. Melissa was a, a there for me on that friend level during that time. After, you know, a period of readjustment, I determined that the best thing for me to do in order to make sure that I was in the best supported place possible is we moved from Greenville, South Carolina to Charlotte, North Carolina. 
I grew up outside this area, but I had a lot of friends and uh, from college and high school up here. And I'm a little closer now to one of my sisters. And so getting up here was the best thing that I have ever done because it was like an instant upgrade for me. And especially for my daughter was like instantly she really needed to be in a new place. And my son caught on pretty quick, you know, not everybody's on the same timeline, but we have been so good and like so happy here. But I did have a period of time where I was like laying low on work in general because I had just moved and I was really involved with it. My daughter is turning out to be an incredibly talented volleyball player. She's so gifted. She, yeah. yeah, we're hoping her club has been talking to her about doing recruitment for colleges. Oh, so yeah. that's no so scholarships. Yes, mama. That's it totally. is so expensive. <laughs> and right. So I was just heavily involved with like her, her volleyball at that time. And I, so I said, okay. What can I do? I need a work project. I need a client. I need something that is has nothing to do with organizing. Along came the perfect person who, this is a wild story, y'all. I, I took up with a client who I met with locally. We were connected locally through a mutual friend. And she is a channeler. And if y'all are not familiar with channeling, it is a spiritual gift. And she channels angels from... I'm not saying this sarcastically. It's just that I know that Pro Organizer Studio is not usually the type of audience that would be listening maybe to stuff like yeah. this. I don't know. You're like, y'all seem like a practical bunch. So I went the opposite. I went to like way yeah. with the land. You went like, yeah. way into way 180 degrees. So, so my lovely client, channeling angels from the seventh dimension, she initially had reached out to me because, again, through our mutual connection, she was like, she was asking around about, so do you have anybody that can help me with social media, that kind of thing? And my friend said, oh, you know, well, Jen's, Jen has been doing online business for a really long time. Like maybe y'all could talk. And I was like, I don't manage social media for nobody. I don't even do that for myself. No, thank like, you. <laughs> not posting on Instagram. I mean, I literally just can think of nothing else I would rather not do. That was too many negatives. Anyway, so so I was looking at her stuff and I was listening to some of her recordings. I hadn't even met her in person yet. And here's what happened. It wasn't a matter of whether I agreed with their content or not. I could see that the intention was very positive. I mean, it's it ultimately whether you believe that you're praying to Jesus or speaking to angels or the Archangel Michael or channeling the Pleiadians from another galaxy. And I'm saying all this because I understand this vocabulary so well now. I was yeah. like... It wasn't a matter of whether I agreed with it or not. I could see that the intention was positive. I could see what she was trying to do and that there were other people in that same sort of niche, like spirituality, but new agey sort of out there. But like the messages and her presence and the way that she spoke was very strong. And I was like, <clears throat> okay, let me suggest this. I told her, I said, I don't do social media, but I was also like, if you took this online as a business and really treated it at consistently and as a business this would blow up. And yeah. here's the thing. I didn't understand necessarily. I mean, I, I understood her message. I actually did understand the content very well, even though it was very unconventional. What I did understand was the mechanics of if you're going to have this be self-sustaining and be monetized, I knew exactly how to do it because I had done it with Pro Organizer Studio. You've done it. Yep. With, you know, the Inspired Organizer course. I'm like, well, if I can build an online company and have it be functioning and really doing well enough to the point to sell it. And if I can go and do the same thing with a, and a woman who channels angels, I felt that qualified as a project different enough that we weren't talking about organizing products. And then I was like, yeah. okay, we'll just see how this goes for a while. It wasn't like a, it was, it's always been a month to month client relationship yeah. and it was not cheap for her, but she trusted me and her husband trusted me. Going back to partners, it's so, it's good. He, believed he also believed in the power of what she was doing he did not understand the internet in fact we butted heads a little bit because i was like you just need to trust me and he was just like why are you girls messing around on youtube i was like don't me sir me. back up yeah, sir <laughs> yeah, i was like just i was like just hold on give it six months and i will just show you i'm not going to keep explaining it to you you know what yeah. i mean i got yes. I like to you know i'm a little feisty does anybody know that anyway so I got into this with her and it was, it challenged me deeply sure. because at times, and I told Melissa this, I was like, I, this woman, she's lovely. 
she's a little crazy. I was like, she's really awesome though. We get along really well and we worked really well. The key was, is that she trusted me. She yeah. trusted me 100%. And there were things that I didn't have to go back and forth. This was where I got actually really happy again. Where I got happy again was that, that it wasn't me in my face out there. I needed a period of rest. I was like, I can't be, I can't be the face of anything. I didn't have the conviction of anything that I was willing to get out and talk about yeah. for a while. And so I was like, I can just be behind the scenes. I can just do all this online business and the mechanics and the metrics. And we published a book for her. We published a course for her. Now I got her on all these pot. I'm skimming over the last year and a half because yes, I'm still working with her a year and a half later. And it's funny because at the beginning, every single month, I don't think I can do it. I was like, I don't think I can do this. Because I kept thinking this was just a one-off. I'm going to go back into teaching online business and teaching like more general, like all those videos I had done during a COVID shutdown. I was like, I'm going to go back to that and I'm going to teach online business in general. I stuck with her and she stuck with me and not everything was easy because sometimes, you know, she was like, I'm feeling that we need to go in this intuitive direction because I'm getting all of these visions and downloads about what we need to do. And I was like, no, we're going to put that on a list for you. And we're going to get to that in the right order <laughs> and later. Yeah. And I just kind of kept filtering out the stuff that she would come out up with because some of it was really good. Not everything. It's kind of like organizing. If you got to get a little bit, you got to cut through and be like, nope, this is really useful. Stick to this. And I kept her on the right track. And she trusted me long enough that a year and a half later, everybody in her industry is like, where did you come from? How yeah. did you get this successful so fast? She's charging $300 to, to talk to her for 45 minutes. And at the beginning of us working together, she was like, you're going to slap me on the hand because I'm just not going to be able to ever charge anybody anything to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, girl. Wrong. We'll but get to that. Thing. Remember when I said that all of these growing pains that I had been through with Pro Organizer Studio and in the early years of all the things that I was like, oh, I wouldn't do that now. I got to apply all of that to her. Yeah. And she knew that I knew what I was talking about because believe me, I have made these mistakes and you don't want to set it up to where people think that there's like a free hotline and you're on the other side of it. And you want to make sure that you're charging for some of your content. Yes, of course, a lot of it can be free, but you have to have something that is a paid offer that goes deeper with you. And I know that people think that you can't or shouldn't, or it's weird to charge money for spiritual content online. But I was like, nope, just trust me. Just trust me. Churches pass the basket around every week. hundred percent. Yeah, ab absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And since we're talking about that, my father... And actually, the majority of the people in my family, even though I've never really shared this on the podcast either. Oh, we're going deep. I love it. A, a lot of people in my family are, work in ministry or have a career that is spiritually related. My father is a, a professional musician who he's been like a resource person, like a speaker and a, a musician a performer in churches for my entire life. I used to talk about on this podcast in the early days, I was like, well, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur like my dad. Well, that's the kind of entrepreneur he was. He was a spiritual leader that worked for himself. And he sold, I mean, the way he monetizes his career is yes, he sells CDs and tapes. Of course, this was back in the day. Yes. Dad doesn't want to put his music on Spotify for some crazy reason. But anyway, right. he has a moral issue. But yes, he sold physical CDs and tapes. Churches would pay him a certain fee to book him. And then yeah, they'd pass offering around to help you know, contribute to his work. I mean, that is a large part of how how he monetized that without charging a million dollars for him to just, just show up. So it, that was his way. And it's funny because he talks about, he was like, well, I just wanted to be a rock and roll star. But the only way I could see how to do that was to combine it with being in, in church because he was the son of a long line of missionaries. And so when he came over, when he, when I say he came over, he grew up in Korea on the mission field. Wait, like, uh, really? his, I didn't his, know this. His family and all of his cousins and all, I mean, I'm telling you, the Kilborns are missionaries generations back. And so he came over to, he came back to the U.S. to go to college and he went to seminary and got like the whole thing. And he, he was that really straight laced, like product of that environment. Yeah. And then he hit like maybe his mid twenties and he went like full, like hippie. Like he like moved to Colorado and was being a musician. But the way his ministry evolved was he became like this young, cool guy. He was an ordained minister. He didn't stay serving just one church, but he, his own personal philosophy about 
uh, about his beliefs came through the storytelling that he would do. And he modernized Bible stories so that they felt like they were present day and not like a million ancient years ago. And so he, he just sort of made church and Sunday school cool. And that was his thing. And that was his whole entire career. And so when, you know, when I'm looking at someone like the Angel Channeler, and then I combine that with my experience with Pro Organizer Studio and the online business aspect, I was like, well, who are you going to find? Not to toot my own horn, but a little bit. I'm like, I'm a weirdo. Like, I'm tooting my weirdo yeah. horn. I'm like one of the few people who, one, has been raised in that environment of this is how I was supported as a child. That was like the family's source of income. And he really made his own path out of being himself. Okay. And then I made my own path out of being myself with Pro Organizer Studio. And then I helped this woman make her own path out of channeling uh, multidimensional beings. And it's not funny to the people whose lives are changed by her work because there are people. I mean, there's always going to be a subset of people, especially on the internet, who are interested in what exactly it is that you do. They don't want to hear from other people. They love, yes, they love your style. They love your presentation. They love your teaching style. And that's why... There's so many flavors out there because we are all different. And even if you feel like you're like a first grader in the scheme of things, you can still teach the people something that they're at the baby level. You're so far ahead of them. You don't have to be like graduate degree master. So, so yeah. So I, going back to what I was saying a a few minutes ago, and then I promise I'm going to take another breath. I turned 40 recently and I've been working with the angel channeler and and, you know now at this point i'm like we're in deep because our relationship is so tight we really work well together she's killing it all the people that i talk to that i know now in her industry because i'm really close with several several of the big podcast hosts and i have worked directly with a couple of companies that she has partnered with who have also asked me they're like we see what you did can you come do that for us and i finally realized i was like I don't know why I'm running away from this <laughs> because life seems to be telling me, Jen, you keep having these people fall into your lap. They're not all in the spiritual realm either. So my website today is everydear.com, every D-E-A-R communications. That site was registered in 2020 because right. I knew that I was going in a more general communications and online business teaching direction. I took my first clients that were not professional organizers in 2021. So we're going on three years now. The type of people that like my personality or see my work, it's either these high level spiritual people, which again, it's, I'm not judging what they believe. It's just that for me, it's not about their beliefs. It's about communicating that message and communicating it to the people who need it. Um, The other type of people that tend to fall in my lap are extremely visionary entrepreneurs. So we're talking about people who, they're really smart, but they're the type of people who are so smart that they don't really communicate to other people very well. Yeah. Like, yep. So, so I sort of become like the translator. Now, this like the book smart, sort of like the book smart, not street smart type of people that they can't communicate. They're very yes. brilliant ideas in yes. understandable like language. Highly technical yes. people who don't really present super well, they need sort of like an in-between person. Now, this makes sense too, because an earlier part of my career, I was working in communications at, in, at Michelin, North America, in the IT department. This was in Greenville, South Carolina. And let's, and so my job was to listen to the highly technical guys that were like talking about systems down, this processing and blah, 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 blah. And you're just like, okay, let me write an email that says, here's how long this web page is going to be out of order yeah. <laughs> right. and have it be accurate. I mean, yeah. So it sa- sounds simple, but it's a very important job because for the other people, of the whole other 10,000 people of the company that are not tech savvy, they're going to email us about a billion times if we are not communicating exactly what is wrong and exactly yeah. what is wrong. And so my job is to understand that and translate it into normal humans, like you normal human speech. So those are also the kind of people in my private clients who tend to be attracted to me because I have some kind of gift, Melissa, and I'm just now realizing this. See, this is long-term eye-opening information that I didn't know at the beginning of Pro Organizer Studio. My gift is that I understand them, or at least that I make them feel understood. Now, I can process the details of what they're talking about. I can't turn around and necessarily teach it to somebody else, but I get the gist. 
I make them feel understood. I make them feel taken care of. And I'm like, we're going to simplify this. Mm -hmm. Organizing, simplifying. We're going to organize what you're trying to say. We're going to simplify it. We're going to make this easy to consume for everybody else that needs to hear this message. When I finally realized, I was like, I don't want to, I was like, I can't believe this, but I don't want to run away from my spiritual client. I don't want to run away from my highly technical weirdo clients. I want to bring them all to run to them. Yeah. Bring them all to me because they need, this is a very unique skill set that I've got now at this point. And I'm like, who else is going to do it? And now we're going back to talking about leadership and service and being a steward. If I don't use the gifts that I have, there are real people out there who will always feel, first of all, like they are failures because they're trying, but they're not really doing it right. For example, a lot of people who just, they want to teach something or they're really passionate and they have this big message and they're very visionary and they're just like, oh, I'll just start a YouTube channel. And then they're like, wait a minute, only two people viewed my yeah. video. There's so much more strategy that goes into these things than what even starts to be apparent at the surface. And I've lived all of that for so long now that it's easy for me to just say, if you can just trust me, I'm going to take your message and I'm going to put it in the right containers at the right time. And we're going to build out this system and we're not going to take you out of the business. We're just going to keep you in your right place. And so that you're not messing with all this stuff behind the scenes. And that's what I've done for several people now. And so as of my 40th birthday and the new year, it kind of all comes together. I was like, well, Jen's doing a new program. Jen has to get back out on the soapbox, even though Jen as a person does not necessarily want to. It's no, I found a new thing that I have to do that is very similar to how I felt when I started Pro Organizer Studio. I was so convicted and I couldn't shut up about it anyway. And I was like, well, let's get on Facebook Live and let's do this course. And that was how all this started. And so we have come full circle because you can't necessarily plan for these things, but once they happen, it's like, what else? I know, I know myself better now. I'm like, I can't run away. Like, I can't not do it. I have to. What you're talking about right now, and we'll just use the word compulsion, which is a word that has a lot of negative connotations to it, but that's I'm what fine I, with it. I'm compulsive. It's, it's, but that's how I felt about starting my organizing business. It was mm-hmm. the only thing that I could think about. And I read this quote, I'm not usually into cheesy quotes, but the, there was a quote that just happened to come along at the right time. That was, if you can't stop thinking about it, you need to start building it. 100%. Yeah. And that is how I felt about my organizing businesses. I was just convicted that this is what I wanted to do. And mm-hmm. I wanted other people to feel the way that I had felt about getting my shit together. Mm-hmm. And I wanted other people to have that magic. And then I also then became very convicted that I saw people making so many mistakes building their business, just like yeah. you said. I did. You were like, wait a minute. Why, why are you doing blah, blah, blah? No, right. we're going to we're gonna re, reorient right over here. And, and so sometimes those are gifts that you are given mm-hmm. from the seventh dimension, from God, from I don't know who, from who. True. Thank you for saying <laughs> that. But, you know, that was my conviction of, no, I would like to teach other people how to start organizing businesses and how to stop all of the garbage that you waste time on for a year. And and so when you have that feeling, which you did, yeah. you have to run toward it because you have to see it play out. Otherwise, 10 years from now, you're going to be like, man, what if? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What if? I uh, It's, there was definitely a feeling of, there's healing and there's rest and there's like taking a sabbatical. And then there's like, when has it become selfishness in a way and stubbornness in a big way? And that feeling definitely hit me because, you know, it takes me a while to process things. I don't know why that is, especially compliments. Yeah. It's, it's hard for me to process a compliment. It's actually very difficult when people who I have met through this company you know, in person and we did meetups, we did retreats and people were like, oh my gosh, I feel like I know you, like you've changed yeah. my life and it, your YouTube channel. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like that's crazy. And it's like, I could not ever connect the fact that they were talking about me because I'm like, when I was doing the content, I felt like I was talking to myself and five other people. Right. But the impact of putting yourself online in the videos and how that just the algorithm and how it just spreads out and how people can find you, it is almost as close to magic, I guess, as you can get. 
but it was so crazy because when people would say things like that, I'm just like, that's so exciting that you, your life was changed. But I'm like, that wasn't me that did that. I just could never connect that. And I don't know if maybe it's just, it's not false humility. I just was like, that's just such a weird feeling for me. I just couldn't ever get it. Maybe if I had, I don't know. I, don't, I don't, can't really say. I think you and I are both uncomfortable with compliments or when people say things that are very like, when people say things like that, it's hard. It's hard to accept that. Well, I'm just like, I know you think I'm not saying anything that is, you know, I am not a senator. I'm not a, <laughs> I, no. you just think, well, I see what, I, I see what you're thank saying. You. No. Yeah. And it's not that I didn't feel appreciated in my role at yeah. Pro Organizer Studio because I absolutely did. It was, but it was just that when somebody would meet me and say that, I was just like, "Yeah, this is too. This is so weird. It's like real life. Like what? Like sure. and none of it felt really real. I guess because I was so focused and so honed in on doing all the things that I was doing. Anyway, with this other client though, she compliments me constantly, all the time, and I'm just like, I was like, I mean, yeah, I definitely had a certain amount of I told you so energy not towards right. her. Yeah, I told you so energy towards her husband because I, I was, was going to say toward her husband for sure. I, like, I knew this was going to work. I was I like, because it's just, math. it's just math. It was like, I knew it was going to be fine, but he didn't understand the internet at all. But anyway, right. but it wasn't until I really had to see it. I, you know, I'm tracking like her metrics over the whole year. And finally, like something just kind of hit me where I was like, huh, I did this. Yeah. <laughs> now she did it, but she wouldn't have had any, she would have still just been like, I don't know, sharing a random post on Instagram or maybe trying to literally type up a transcript herself on her blog. That was yeah. where she started. She had no, she was just like, oh, I don't know, like maybe, you know, maybe somebody will want to have a private session with me. Now she does Zoom sessions and she's making more money than I ever have. Yeah. It's wild, actually. And, and so when I finally realized, I was like, wait a minute, I, oh, like I have to see my own compliments or I have to see my own measured success. I think that when somebody gives me the compliment, I mean, I love it and I feel good, but I don't feel that deep emotion of cel like patting myself on the back. I don't let other people pat me on the back. I have to yeah. be the one. That did it. Well, and, and, and for you, it needs to be maybe a little bit more data-based. I need yeah. to see Visual, the actual yes. number. That yeah. indeed says, yes, you do know what you're doing. And right. and so right. then you go, okay, yeah, I can acknowledge that. So yeah, yeah. But also it's like, why am I surprised? Because I did have faith in myself and I knew that I knew what I was doing. But I mean, at the end of the day, I was a little bit surprised that I stuck with it as long as I did, because there were times where I was just like, this is not my, this is not my people. This was a sidetrack. I'm going to get back into like business. And I'm like, wait a minute, these spiritual people don't have other people giving them really good business advice because it, it does help. And this is what I did with professional organizers. It's helpful for somebody to translate general business advice to your industry specifically. To a specific, very specific niche. Yes. yes. Not just yes. a generalized right. service industry because or you, whatever. If you're just getting started as a professional organizer, you can read the best business book in the world and you're not going to know exactly how to apply it specifically for all of the little intricate details that organizing has to bring with it. And so I'm doing the same thing now. I'm doing the same thing now for spiritual, visionary, highly head in the clouds, woo people, whether they're entrepreneurs or just spiritual teachers. So this was, this was not the plan. But I had faith that that something was going to come together that eventually I would feel passionate about enough to be willing to come out of hiding and be out there making new content on. So if y'all see me around the internet and I'm talking about the seventh dimension or AI, like uh, artificial intelligence is uh, comes up a lot. That's why is because yeah. this is what my people, this is what my 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 set of people that have found me on their own they say that your vibe is your tribe like that sounds yes weird. but but i'm like well this must be my vibe i must be a freaking weirdo and i guess i'm ready <laughs> to just admit it let's go and, but also what I, I think that what they like about me is that i can understand them but i'm also keeping it super real and that's yeah. what i was always trying to do here also and so that's where i'm at now and i have not truly left the pro organizer studio house. If you're inside the inspired Ever. organizer group and if you tag me, I will always see it, <laughs> you know, but nobody's tagged me in like years, actually, probably like a few times a year because they know they've got Melissa and they've got the other mentors and there's probably a bunch of women in there now who don't even know who I am. And that's fine too. I do not need, I'm totally good. But do you want to know who, who built this house? 
I'm responsible. Melissa is the person who has made it truly a home and a long-term comfortable home for everybody here. I want to go back to a few things, though. I think that there there is something that weird that I want to pick out of that is, Mm -hmm. well, maybe not weird, but when I first met you, I'm like, oh, a famous person. You did (laughs) say that. I did. (laughs) I was like, (laughs) you're famous. And you're like, what? And the funny thing is now people will say it to me because your voice is on the internet and they don't know you. And so, and the point is you are just a regular person. I am just a regular person. We just happen to have a a microphone that we speak into and people listen to, which we are appreciative of deeply appreciative that people listen to us and that people take our advice. But what I want to go back to is that even you as successful as you were in building pro organizer studio, which you built a very beautiful and very safe house And as successful as you were with that and as successful as the data has shown that you have been with these new clients, with your new venture, with Mm -hmm. other entrepreneurial ventures you've had in your life, you have had moments of doubt of, I can't do this. Uh, I I can't. like Absolutely. (laughs) And so (laughs) I just want to say, and I have it every day I get up and I'm like, okay, I can do this. I am capable. I am... Um, I actually have a a post-it note on my computer that says I can count on myself, which is something that I just read in a book that I love. Mm -hmm. But the point that I want to make is as organizers are out there and as the people in our community are listening to this and are out there and they're doubting themselves, doubting that a client sees them as an expert, doubting that they can run a business, doubting that they have what it takes, whatever. I don't want people to feel like, well, the rest of us have it together and you're the only one who doesn't. Mm -hmm. All of us no matter what our results are, no matter how successful we have been, have those moments of the self-doubt and imposter syndrome and all the words that you want to throw at it. We've all got it. So please don't think you're alone because you're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing really else to add to that other than picture me like laying in bed for three years, just going, okay, like the energy that I used to have was gone. The motivation and the confidence that I had was gone. I mean, I was just like, I was back to going through emotions and uh, going through emotions. I guess that's really the big part is that like emotional crap. I mean, that all takes time and sort of acceptance too, that it's going to take time. I do want to speak directly to anybody who, a couple things. Anyone who is listening who, first of all, I want to invite this. I do. I don't expect this, but I want to say the words because I have learned over the past few years about myself, especially when I went through my coaching certification, that at times, even though I feel like I'm being very welcoming and I feel like I'm being very empathetic, that sometimes I don't directly say the words. And so I want to directly say the words to our audience here that if you want to do a business coaching session with me, And it is about organizing, but it's not really about organizing because it's about some of the stuff we've been talking about here. Like I, at times I have been connected with a couple of organizers who have been looking to possibly sell their business or what am I going to do in this next stage of life? Like when I'm having a baby or something like I want to step back. It is okay for you to come to me. I'm saying this. It is okay for you to come to me if you are an organizer and you don't really want to talk about organizing. You're like more of just a, a general business or life because it all connects to each other. And I do have business coaching sessions that you can book, like just one, you know, like that's fine. I mean, first of all, the Inspired Organizer program still has all the stuff that I teach in it. It's just Melissa has added to it and changed things that have evolved over the years online with business and websites and that kind of thing. Okay. So of course, all of that's there. But in the bigger picture, Maybe you started your organizing business at a time where it felt like the exact right thing to do and that has now become your baby and you really don't know what to do about it now. I'm not going to be the one who, you know, if you're looking for coaching on starting your organizing business, I'm going to send you right back to Melissa with love just because that's her, that's, she owns that, that piece of how we teach and how we coach. I am willing, able, and ready to go there emotionally in a business coaching session. I I have worked through my crap. I can (laughs) handle yours. Like I know that life, I mean, again, my life has changed in some ways that I had no control over, you know, my, you know, when my kids schedule and all of that changed and now they're teenagers, they're not little kids anymore. 
I mean, all of this stuff impacts our energy levels. It impacts our decision making. If you do not have a partner that helps you with decision making, please come book me. Okay. And this is not, I mean, I don't care whether anybody books a coaching session again, because it's, I'm not trying to sell that for organizers. I just want you to know that I am still that person who can get it and yeah. that it is available and that I would never turn you down. It would never turn you away, even if you don't care about being a visionary or spiritual entrepreneur. So when you come to my website, what I'm saying is that back door is always open for you guys, always. And I guess like it just needs to be said. It needs to be. It's not just the fact that it's there. It mm -hmm. needs to be said that I am willing, able and ready and I can handle it. And, you know, we can have a private conversation that will hopefully again, I'm a certified coach now. I'm not just. Yes, you are. Up. Like I know how, you know, when I got into my business coaching program, I was so excited because I thought I was going to learn all this like crazy business stuff that I'd never heard of before. And they were like, well. Really, business coaching is life coaching. You just talk about business at first and then it becomes like, oh, you dig into like real shit. And I was like, yeah. damn it. I didn't want to do that. I mean, <laughs> that's not what I signed up for. Obviously, that was what I needed. I needed the the actual skill set of, you know, people come and it's about one thing, but we've got to address like the underlying beliefs, behaviors, you know, your what's your purpose? What's your mission? If you want to come talk to me about your purpose and you don't care about building a YouTube channel out, out of it or shit or writing a book about it that's what i'm helping some of my clients do but if you just want to come and talk about your purpose and why it is that you got into organizing in the first place yeah. and what it is that you want to do next i am the perfect person to come talk to about that of course melissa yeah. can talk to you about that too but because i have ridden this specific ride and not that many people have we we will always have this connection here yes because uh, me and melissa are like we're belly buddies for life. We said that at the beginning. Like, we're not, yeah. like, we're always going to be, you know, spiritually, mentally, physically, maybe not physically, but emotionally connected. And so these two businesses are our sisters. Yes, they are. And I... Sisters that I gave birth to? Is that a weird <laughs> metaphor? I kind of like it. No, I like it. We're going to go with it. But I think this is important because, first of all, you are moving on from Pro Organizer Studio, but you are not ever shutting the door. We're no. just going to beat this house analogy into the ground. You are never shutting the door. You are never burning down the house. You are leaving that door open. <laughs> down it's, yeah, it's just a matter of you are very gifted at helping with a very certain set of decisions that you might be making. And you are the perfect person to be able to say, I have done this. You know, mm -hmm. I have sold a business. I have started multiple businesses. I have started something brand new that was scary. I have built all these things from the ground up, which is a lot of work, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> if you only knew how much work goes on behind the scenes of all of this. And that's why I love when I see people that start coaching businesses and they're like, oh, this must be easy. Nope. No, it's not. But also that, you know, you are starting something new, but it does not mean that the people that you started with are not still incredibly important to you, our audience. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. And Jen is always going to be a part of the program. Like Jen yeah. is in videos and you are always going to be a part of the DNA of this program and you're doing something new, but it's not a goodbye. Oh yeah, absolutely not. And like I said, I'm in, I'm, I'm on Facebook. I use Facebook a little bit differently now than I did way back in the day. I used to be friends with everybody. I don't really accept friend requests unless it's, I use my friends really more as like friends and family, not yeah. for business. For business, for Pro Organizer Studio, I am in the Inspired Organizer group. And maybe now that I've said that I'm in there and I always respond to tags, maybe people will tag me more often. I don't care. I'm just not going to, I will only answer a question that I'm absolutely positive I have something <laughs> Um, otherwise I'd be like, uh, Melissa, I don't know. Um, it's, like I said, it's like, she knows the content now better than I do. I used to be the person who was just like, yep, go to minute number 11 on lesson yeah. four. So she will still be able to navigate that, but I am absolutely there. I have a Facebook page for, this was the one guys, the same one that I started during COVID where I have all of my online business content, how to 101, all of it is on there. The name of that page, it says Jen Kilborn, Every Dear Communications. And I I still post occasionally. I haven't done a Facebook Live there in a while. I did, gosh, I did 
maybe five in 2022 and then I haven't done it in a long time, but I'm ramping that back up now that I have some new things happening. LinkedIn. Okay. So I'm just going to run through all my things really quick. Yeah, so do it. Can, Let's talk about LinkedIn. People can find. Well, so LinkedIn, I, I completely shut down my old LinkedIn. This was during the period of rest and rehab. I completely closed down my old one and now I have a new one. Jen Kilborn, come find me. You, a thing that you guys could do for me if you love me and just want to do something positive, please connect with me. Like you have to connect yep. with me on LinkedIn and something that would be highly beneficial to wit where I am and what I need right now is if I have impacted you like in a long-term way in your business as an organizer, I welcome and would really appreciate one of those LinkedIn recommendations. You can write yes. it on the person's profile because I'm literally starting my LinkedIn from scratch, which makes it a little bit look like I'm starting business from scratch, which is not true. But I only have like 20 connections on LinkedIn, which is so funny because it's, aren't you an online business person? Why don't you have yes, any I am. friends? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I'm not a LinkedIn person though. Stop yelling at me. Instagram, don't come on Instagram. I don't like Instagram. Melissa's killing it with Pro Organizer Studio. I have one for my personal. I do not, this is very, it is private. So that's not a thing. I will probably have a up and running YouTube channel. I do have currently as of this recording, a couple of videos up on YouTube for my new program that I'm running, which is called the Powerful Presence Method. And it is going to be a year long mentorship and coaching course plus program. And that is for anybody who falls in this category of like visionary or spiritual leaders. Uh, you know, I keep using a few different words because some of them like, you'll know if it's you, if it's not you, and that's totally fine. But if you guys can think of anybody in your life, or if you know, for example, let's say that you have somebody in your life who is like, for example, in my family, we have several retired like clergy members who are like, yeah, I've always been meaning to get around to write a book. Maybe I want to do a podcast. I'm sounding like my father now. It's like the way yeah. he like, man, I don't know. I'm like almost 80. I'm like, dad, write a book. And he's like, I don't yeah. know. Okay. These are the kind of people that I want. Send me all of these people who are just like, I don't know how to do that. But if you're trying to share your life's legacy online before you die and you don't know how to do it because you don't know understand any of the tech stuff, I'm your girl. Okay, so we've kind of ran through the platforms. My website is everydeer.com. Every deer to the subscribers on your email list. Every dear Melissa, dear Jen, like dear, okay. like all of those things that you see yourself on an email list and you're like, oh, I'm just a number. Or I'm just another, that's a little automatic, you know, in your email provider, you can make it like populate their name. <laughs> and this is funny because this was over that quarantine during COVID. I was like, I'm going to start a company that cares. I like to teach people how to care about their email list and not send out these dumb automated stuff that makes it look like a robot wrote it, right? And so I'm trying to help people build scalable automated email systems without it feeling like sterile. I still want it to feel personal. So Every Dear Communications is about looking and sounding like yourself when you're on a video or when you're writing, like when you're writing your emails, especially this is for, this is great for the kind of person who's, I've never been a writer professionally. I don't know how, I don't know how to make it sound all formal. I'm like, don't make Please it sound, sound just formal. be yourself. Freed it and double check yeah. that you didn't say something that, you, you know, you didn't intend to, but make it sound like you. That's my whole philosophy here. So that's what Every Dear Communications is about. My private client, list currently is full, but I do have a, I have a new webinar for these visionary, anybody who considers themselves like, like a spiritual gift that they have, whether it's teaching, healing, coaching, being an expert on something, but they have a little bit more of like a spiritual side to them where they want to talk about some of that woo stuff without sounding crazy. I can help you with that. So that's a long list, but like just for all of you guys that want to know what's up that you have heard it today. I love it. I just want to say something that you were just talking about, which I had written down earlier that I wanted to talk about. When I came into Pro Organizer Studio and we were transitioning things, you know, and again, people were used to you and then they start seeing me and they're like, who's this? And I, for a while, tried, I didn't ever try to be you, but I tried to do things the way you would do things. And it didn't feel authentic because it wasn't right. me. We have slightly different communication styles and we are all our own people. So and so the more you can just be yourself and when you doubt being yourself, like when you go, well, maybe people won't like me or mm -hmm. maybe people don't want 
who I am. Or I talked to an organizer the other day. Actually, this all aligns. There's an organizer that I spoke to the other day who also likes to do intuitive. She calls it the woo side of organizing. Yeah. And she goes, she wants to do some energy work wants to do some of those types of things. And she was hesitant to put that on her website. And I said, there might be people that go to your website and go, that's not my jam. But there are going to be people who go to your website and go, oh my gosh, she gets me. And so when I let go and started being myself and not trying to be you, and when we all let go and let those things happen, your people come to you. And you are trying to get people to be able to translate that and just say, I want to be my authentic self and explain who I am. That's what I made Inspired Organizer to be, guys. That's why I named it that is because I said that from the very beginning. I said, you can be any type of organizer that you want to be. You can be the color-coded, super happy, upbeat, like everything matches and we have the pretty labels. Or you can be the super zen, minimalistic, more earthy, whatever, or something in between, including the woo. That was what Inspired Organizer was. Yeah. It is. So yes, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's like you do have a path. If you are being authentic to yourself and building a business that feels right and true to you and your soul, as long as you plug that into just a system, which is what Inspired Organizer gave you, a system for how to build out the business side. I said, it doesn't matter what your particular inspiration is or what your particular point of view is or what your organizing method or style is. This is for everybody. You put it in a framework and put it in a system and you can be successful. So yes, I'm so glad you said that because right now I'm doing that for a larger audience. And that does feel that's why these businesses are sisters. So accurate. You really nailed it there. You nailed it. Well... That's why we work well together. I know. We have God, each other. I'm glad we have each other. I and the other thing, it. too, that I will say, and just be ready to accept a compliment, even though you don't want to. Okay, watch me try. <laughs> okay. So you said a lot of nice things about me at the beginning. I could say a million nice things about you. I am not going to spend as much time as I could talking about all the great things that I love about you. But one of the things that has made me a much better person, a much better coach, a much better business owner, a much better parent, a much better everything is I have always been the kind of person that was like, okay, someone brings me a problem and I'm like, I got it. Like, here are your five answers and here are the five things you need to do a bubble. And I barely listen. Right. And I had a guy many years ago, there was a, I'll never forget this. You know, you have those moments in your business life that you're like, oh yeah, I'll I'll always remember that one. And there was a Mm -hmm. system we were learning and it was L-A-E-R where that was the acronym. And uh, L was listen. And A, I don't even remember what A was, if I'm being honest, because my coworker goes, Melissa goes straight from listen to attack. Okay. (laughs) So so I was like, okay, point taken. That's fair. But one of the things that has been an evolution for me in my career is, and just in my business journey, is listening and stepping back and not giving the answer right away Mm -hmm. because sometimes you have to sit with it. And sometimes you need to ask a lot of other questions. And sometimes you need to say, it's not really the thing. And this is good for organizing too. It's not the thing. It's not the pile of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's what's underneath the pile. And then what's really underneath the pile. Right. Yeah. And that's what we do in our groups is we will sometimes someone will say, here's my surface question. And it's really not that. They're really asking about something else. Mm -hmm. And being, you have taught me how to ask those questions and how to get deeper and how to really not just go from here are the five things you need to do. It's here's what you need to think about because that's really where the growth is. Did I consciously teach you that? Because I don't remember. Are you saying you just- No, you didn't. No, it's just what I've learned. You made me do that? Working with you. Yes. Hey, that's a really nice compliment, Melissa. And I do fully accept that. And I really didn't know. I was not aware until this moment that was. Yeah. No, it's a really big deal because I- Instead of just reacting immediately of, I know how to solve your problem, Mm -hmm. just do this. I want to solve your problem, but I also want you to think about how is this not going to be a problem 10 more times? Because 
a lot of times it's not the surface problem. It's really a bigger thing underneath that is a global way you look at things. And then that is going to affect all the other 20 things. And I mean, this mm -hmm. is going to, this could be its own separate podcast, but that is the gift of what coaching brings to you. And yes, we can all run our own businesses, but when you have someone to do that, Hey, let's step back and think about all of these other things. It makes you a better business person, a better leader, I think. Well, I really love that. I really love that. And I think that applies to organizers too, because we have always yeah. said, or I have always said, there's a lot of different types of organizers because there's a lot of different types of clients. And some so clients many. don't want to solve their ultimate problem. No. They want you to fix what is on the pile yeah. today. And if you get deep with them, they're going to say, don't come back. I'm not interested <laughs> you know in saying? that. Yes. yes. And so, right. And then there are other people who want to figure out the long-term efficiency of how to prevent it happening 10 times over. I love that because this is not to judge any of you guys. It's there. You can be yourself and find the people who need your level of willingness to go deep. Because again, not everybody wants to be coached and challenged. Some people just want you to literally just do it for me. Yeah. And that's helpful at times. But I get what you're saying is that you can't be a coach who's only ever just telling people what to do and doing it for them. Right. You also have to be somebody who is willing yeah. to challenge at the right time. Yeah, you're right. And I think, you know, it comes with maturity. The maturity is not that you always go deep. The maturity is to know when it's correct to do it and when it's yes. not. When it's that, it. By the way, I'll right. be happy to tell you the five things to do. I do that all the time. <laughs> Here's how to solve your problem. Here are the five things to do to solve your sometimes, problem. But... Sometimes surface level is, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. The maturity yeah. is to know the difference of not pushing somebody at the wrong time. Yeah, yeah. Mm, totally. Mm. Mm. All oh, of it is all connected, you guys. It's all connected. It's all connected in this dimension and every other dimension. Mm -hmm. And Melissa, I really appreciate you having me on today and in well, your house. I always, you are always invited to my home, either literally or metaphorically. Love uh, that. Yes. Anytime. Thank you. Jen's house also very cute, by the way. We didn't really talk. You just talked about moving to Charlotte, but your place is also. Melissa so has visited fun. me here and that was yeah. a lot, a lot of fun. Love it was. And if you think that this conversation is, imagine if, imagine the conversations that are not recorded. <laughs> Between me and you. Yes. They go on a long time. Yes. They go on a long time. A lot of things are talked about. And I just, I appreciate you as a friend and as a mentor and as building this very beautiful house that a lot of people are, I mean, thousands of people across the literal world. I was telling someone yesterday, it's That's five crazy. continents. Five continents. That is. And maybe six. I'm going to have to check. Wow. But we can this is great. We just, it really is amazing what you have built. And I have told you that on many occasions. And every once in a while, even though, you're not in the house all the time. I will just send you a little nugget and I'll just be like, this is the house you built. And this <laughs> is this I do because I do. you were the very visionary founder of this organization and you will always be a part of it. Thank so. you. This was highly meaningful to me. And I feel like I'm in a place where I can really hear that and have this conversation today. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Well, thank you as always for being there for all of us. And we will see you at everydeer.com. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you will. <laughs>